Okay, space sleuths and alien detectives. Today I'm doing a, a, an update on what I've been finding in the last week or so. Uh, I've been doing a lot of searching through Mars images as usual and lots of other people have been helping me with this on Mars Magazine. If you're not a member of Mars Magazine, come along, it's absolutely free on Facebook and you get this big free app here for your mobile device with loads of cool stuff on it uh, which you can check out, that's really cool. Um, there's always articles on here and this is where you'll see the latest images that we're looking at and, and working out what what's going on. There's this interesting one here with a streak, a, light, a streak of light going through it. That may be a micrometeor or something. Uh, who knows, it could be a, a lens artifact or something like that. There, there is a lot of radiation on Mars and, and because it's got quite a thin atmosphere, little meteors come through quite a lot and, and cause lots of interference. Fragments of burning up kind of um, micrometeors and stuff like that so could be and I've just put this up on the here which is a, an update on some of the finds recently and what I've done is I've put all these memes in a post here so you can just kind of flick through this um, playlist here now not all these were found by me some of these were found by Steve Bolden who's a, a, a very good researcher and he's been supplying me with lots of interesting images to go on Mars magazine and what I tend to do is uh, wait till there's a bunch of them and then do about five or six at once and then put them up in batches and uh, that's probably what I'm doing with this video as well. I will show you quite a lot of images in this video so it may be uh, upwards of 20 minutes this video because there's a lot to see here so I, I've, I won't spend a lot of time explaining each image because there's too many and I will put the clips in at the end of the video for you to pause and look at properly anyway. But there was this kind of weird skull thing which looks uh, like some kind of weird kind of ape or, or something uh, with very large teeth. Um, really cool. Uh, this, this is one I found a while back. You may have seen some of these already. I'm just comparing them back to back for people. Um, there's, there's one here with the uh, very small kind of narrow nose. Like a lot of these um, people on Mars seem to have. Some of them look very human like this. I still can't work out whether this is a statue or a mummified head. Not enough detail to tell either way really. But this is the one we got also. There's lots of these. You can go through my videos, my recent videos, and see a lot of these anyway if you haven't already. Uh, this is the main one I'm looking at today along with another similar one. Now this to me looks like an ape uh, similar to a gorilla or perhaps uh, a large um, chimpanzee or something along those sort of lines. I couldn't say exactly which, it's probably neither. Uh, this is Mars, so it's not going to be the same, but th there are similarities with some of these skulls and heads and bones that we find. They do bear some similarities to Earth species, but they're not the same. Um, that was recent. There's also this thing uh, that I, I found. Uh, now, this is really, really quite crazy. And uh, you've, it's like, whoa, hang on a minute, what am I looking at? Um, now, I can't work out either whether this is a statue that's got some kind of fung growth on it, some kind of fungi growing on it here, because this does look like fungi, this light-coloured, mushroom-shaped kind of um, structure going on here. There's, there's lots of it. This could be coral, and this may... Now, but it, it, what amazed me about this is it, uh, the, the mouth and the eye sockets here, almost no nose or nasal cavity there. but. If you go back to some of these others, like this guy here, which I call the Mars boy, this one, um, they do have very small, narrow noses, and uh, their the nasal cavities are often very small, as I've seen and shown in many of the skulls also that I've, I've um, published in the last year or two, or three. Um, some of these things look very human, but some of them don't. Some of them look quite different. Uh, th there does seem to have been many different types of, of primates on, on Mars as well, this being one of them. Uh, and this, in fact, is right near a statue as well, which is really cool. And uh, this is an update on my uh, previous video, um, which I've got up here. Hang on a minute. Uh, let's have a look. Is it up here? Let's have a look here. Uh, yeah, row of statues found on Mars. Now, uh, one of these looks a bit like the monkey god Hanuman. Okay, which is 
who is a, a sort of demigod that's worshipped by Hindus and, and Buddhists and various people in the Far East. That's worth checking out. There's a row of statues here. And uh, this new one is right next to them. And I missed it. So this is kind of an update on that video. So this would be kind of row of statues part two or, or something like that. This would be cool. So let me show you the folder actually because that would make more sense if I show you the folder. Uh, this one here. We've got that Hanuman looking statue, uh, which is the best enhancement, that one there. Okay, heavily damaged. This point doesn't go up as far as it looks. This, this isn't joined here. There's another rock behind that looks in line with it, but it's not joined. So this point here goes up to about here, and that's a rock behind, okay? So there we have it, there's Hanuman. That's what I'm calling him. I mean, it, it may not be a, a, a monkey god, but the face does have some simian monkey-like uh, proto-human features, okay? So check that out. You can see more on that in the previous video, uh, as, as you can these other things. This is a new find, and it's right next to those. Um, Here's the Hanuman statue, just here. Really brightened up this, you can see it quite clearly now. There's the eyes and the nose and the mouth. And the, the statue that started all this was the one over here on the far right, which I published years ago now, this one. Which was kind of, kind of Mayan, kind of uh, like an Atlantean statue, perhaps. And uh, forgive it if you hear any loud whirring noises, uh, that's my fan going. It's very hot here in the UK at the moment. It has, we've had a real heat wave for the last week or so. And uh, the computer's struggling a little bit with the heat. I also showed this one in that video, which may or may not be a statue, but it has a very interesting triangular part here. So I don't know if this is a statue, but it may be. And part of it's broken off here. You can see this shard has come off. So that may be a statue, but of course these things are damaged, and uh, damaged statues are often quite difficult to spot, especially especially if they're really heavily broken up and uh, have the nose noses broken off. And there's other ones here that may also be statues up in this ridge line here, uh, but a lot of them are too kind of vague, and it's it's hard to say either way with a lot of them. There's probably lots more in here that I haven't positively identified. Um, but this, this new one I'm just about to show you uh, is over here. So it's actually right near the, the one on the far right here. You just look down, group of rocks, and there's this very strange looking dude. Now, this may not be a dude at all. This may actually be uh, some brain coral or some kind of coral on a rock. And the rock just happens to have what looks like two eye sockets and a mouth. Okay, so it's just there. So you, you can... Go on, on the Gigapan for uh, Sol 540 and you'll find it. I'll put a link to that anyway in the, in the description. So you've got that one there and you've got this one and there's that statue there and there's this big thing here which may or may not be a statue and there's probably a load more up here uh, but a lot of them like this could be a statue but it, it could be heavily, the nose could be missing, it could be one there. You know a lot of these do resemble heads but when they're broken up hard to identify so I may come back to this again at a later date. Okay, so let's get rid of that. So there is that one. I'll just show you that clip. Um, very odd indeed. You have two eye sockets and a mouth, but that, like I said, is maybe a coincidence. Uh, but the fact that there are other statues around it, you've got to think twice about everything you see on Mars. When you have groups of statues and groups of skulls, they do tend to be in groups and along the, the, the bottom of ridge lines. Uh, where they were probably once covered in sand and the sand is, is being blown away by the wind on Mars. But this does look like some kind of coral, organic material here that's kind of hardened and, and uh, calcified perhaps. This may have been underwater for a long time, don't know. Um, this was once a lake bed, so it could have been. But this looks to me a bit like, a bit like fungi growing here, it's kind of fleshy coloured stuff which appears in, in certain areas on petrified wood, I've seen it. Um, these are often kind of blob shaped or mushroom shaped 
and there is a lot. There's a lot of petrified wood in Gale Crater. NASA calls it um, sedimentary rock, <laughs> yeah, or uh, shale rock or something like that. But it's blatantly not. Some of it is actually wood, and this stuff tends to grow on the wood. And if this is actually a head, uh, a, a mummified head, then perhaps the mu the the, the, um, the fungi is growing on on what's left of the moisture inside the head or, or something. I mean, there are certain types of fungi on Earth that only grow on certain types of tree. And there are certain fungi that only grow in certain types of dung from certain types of animals, like cow dung or whatever. And there may be types of fungi on Mars that only grow on desiccated and dying corpses or on certain types of petrified wood or something like that. So that is possible. Um, and fungi may only live for a few days, some, some may only live a week or even a few hours. And it may be possible that, as I've said before in previous videos, that the, uh, the, the Curiosity rover may be disturbing, as it's driving over a lot of these rocks, it may be disturbed actually bringing up spores that are in the sand underneath or, in, or caught under these rocks or whatever, or in the rocks. There could be fungal spores in there that are being released as they break the rocks, driving over them. Okay. That's a possibility. I, I can't prove it, but it's a, a, a distinct possibility and may explain some of the rather strange things we're seeing on some of these rocks or whatever these things are, uh, okay? Petrified wood or whatever. Okay, so that was cool. That is a one strange looking dude, <laughs> if it is a dude. But it does seem to be in uh, two eye sockets here, so it could actually be a, um, a mummified head or, or even a statue that was underwater and had kind of barnacle type things growing on it or something, or some kind of um, coral. And I have found what resemble examples of brain coral in the area. So this may be brain coral, and just happens to have a kind of facial morphology that, that, that's kind of semi-human. So there we are. So enough on that one. Uh, there was also this, now this is cool, this is what I've just found, this is the most recent thing. Um, I've showed you this one. Now, now this one uh, here is the one that looks like an ape, like an ape, or possibly a gorilla or something similar. Uh, and it's near. Let me show you the, the raw image here. Now, it's near a statue or head here. Now, if you look here, is a head. Now, this was actually found, I think, by Martin Graney a few years ago, and she posted it on. The, on the Martian Genesis. I'll see if I can find a clip of it that she's done. Because um, she did a nice enhancement of this and kind of brightened it right up. Uh, a really nice job. So I'll find a clip of that and put it in as well because she she deserves credit for that, I think. But this, this kind of um, ape skull is here. So we have this large head here, which is probably about a foot high, which is similar in size and not very far from the ones I've just showed you on that other ridge line, okay? This is not far away. This is Sol uh, 571. So th this is probably only 50 feet away from there, uh, less than 100 feet away. And you have this, what looks like a statue head here. And you have the monkey skull or cranium here, which still seems to have hair and fleshy material on it. There's also a whole bunch of them up here but the image is too poor and too vague to tell exactly what's going on here. Um, it's, it's difficult when you have lots of things jumbled up like this because of the low image quality. Uh, the, the, it's very difficult to make out one for, thing from another because they kind of overlap each other slightly. And when, it, when it's a bit out of focus, you don't have good definition between the objects, as I'll show you here. I did a bit of an enhancement of that, but it doesn't really help, you see? because there's something behind this. This this is another head, like a monkey or baboon or some kind of whatever species, don't know. And uh, you've got a head here sticking up with two eyes and a nose and a mouth. It's a bit vague, let's go back a bit. That helps if you go back a bit. But because there's other stuff around it, it's all jumbled and, and the image quality is really bad, so I'm not gonna spend ages on that. There's this weird little thing as well, just near the, these things on the ground, which looks a bit like a hermit crab, but it, it seems to have like a head with two eyes and a nose and a mouth there. <laughs> really strange. Could it be a little 
tiny humanoid that's kind of fossilized or or uh, freeze dried or whatever and and uh, mummified. Who knows? It seems to have something sticking down here, like a limb. But of course, these things may be heavily eroded, and and much like uh, in the in the Atacama Desert, you get. Um, now, the Atacama Desert is the place most like Mars on Earth. It's the, it's the driest place on Earth, and they keep finding these mummies in these on these ridge lines. Now, these ridge lines are very similar to the ones on Mars. They've got these slopes, and uh, the, the, the skulls and mummies tend to appear near the bottom of these, as the the sand erodes down or along. The wind blows it along or down. Okay. And then eventually, what, what you start off with is the top of the head showing, and then as the sand erodes, the eyes then show, then the, then the mouth, and then the chin. And then often on Mars, often they're, they're buried up to the chin, but they've probably got a body underneath. Now, this, this, is this, this goes for statues and mummies. They're, they all seem to have been buried along ridge lines initially in sand, and the sand has been blown away. So then revealing them, but most of them are, do seem to be only buried up, up, to the, up to the chin or whatever. But some that I found are fallen over and, and on sideways and some are unburied. Uh, I found broken, almost complete statues as well. If you go back through my statue collection, there are one or two that look, that with torsos and arms and stuff like that as well. But what we may be seeing, of course, is not necessarily just mummies. What we may be actually seeing are Pompeii like victims of a cataclysm, much like, uh, well, similar to Pompeii. What there may have been, there may have been lots of people in the area, and there could have been a, a massive explosion, like on, from a, a Olympus Mons, the largest uh, um, volcano known to, to us at the moment uh, in our solar system. And uh, if that went off, it, it, it may have just partially destroyed the planet at least on one side of the planet, and may explain why a lot of the damage is on one side of Mars and not on the other. Um, there, there could have been a massive, massive explosion from Olympus Mons, and it, it, it could have killed millions of people, or hundreds of thousands, I don't know. Uh, I mean, there, there probably was wars up there as well. If you look at some of the, the things I've found and other people have found, it looks like vehicles and sh uh, ship wrecks and and, and uh, weaponry and stuff like that lying around, half buried, and uh, broken and dilapidated buildings and smashed debris everywhere. So there was explosions on Mars, you can tell that just by the debris. And a lot of these what look a bit like um, statues may actually be encrusted corpses that have been cooked in volcanic ash, like the Pompeii victims here. And even animals that, that, that you see things like this on Mars that, that look a bit like animals that are kind of curled up and uh, contorted bodies like this with limbs and things sticking up. So there, there have been things found like this. Uh, I've got one or two of them on my channel where you, you see kind of what they're like animals, but they, but they don't look quite right. Because, but if they're encrusted in volcanic ash, it's basically a form of concretion. It forms like a concrete coating on the person, like someone's chucked a load of wet plaster on them, and, it, and then it kind of just solidifies and hardens like concrete, and then preserves them like a statue. So that may be what we're seeing, which may explain why a lot of them are in death postures, like some of these guys are, some of these uh, people and animals are. Death postures are obviously self-explanatory. These are death postures. Um, statues tend to be much more elegant and, and tend to be more upright and don't necessarily show people um, contorted and twisted up in agony like we have here, okay? So statues tend to be of pe living people. Uh, that's one way of telling between a statue and, and a, a mummy or a, a preserved body is that a statue should have at least some sort of elegant kind of um, poise to it, okay? So that's one way of telling, but it's not 100%. I mean, and especially when you have lots of erosion like you've got here, wind eroded um, structures on, on Earth, which can not often look very odd. And we've got these kind of eroded uh, structures here. So there's, there's, there's natural erosion going on as well. 
uh, of rocks that can make very odd kind of ventifact shapes like we have here which kind of look look a bit like buildings or even even people uh slightly sometimes um it's weird when you when you type in almost anything to do with uh wind eroded corpses some of my video covers come up here you've got some of my images here <laughs> yeah so there there we are i won't go on too long now um i'll put some more clips in in a minute there there was a, another thing i was going to show you quickly uh we've already seen that uh i'll put some clips of all these in at the end anyway so if i've missed anything i'll go over it again and you can freeze frame it and look at the images in your own time and if you want any if you want to actually uh download any of these images you can come to our alien tv mars magazine and come to this page and you're you're absolutely welcome to download any of the my enhanced clips that i've got here and meme clips so you can just click on them and then and then right click and save as onto your desktop or whatever so you can collect them in fact I, I i encourage people to collect these because if for any reason my channel gets uh done over or something like that or or um i lose a lot of stuff then at least other people out there will have some of these things uh on record and and saved in a safe place so i do recommend you come along and and uh, back up some of this stuff um because who knows the internet may one day not resemble anything that it does now the way things are going so come along there's the eight uh, the other one was uh that one i've showed you that that's a previous one that's a previous one that's one i showed in the previous video that's a new one that i've showed briefly i think in the previous video that one there that's really cool uh this is a new one um that I found last night, which is a uh, now whether this is a statue or a mummy, I don't know. Not far from the Dingo Gap area, this is Sol 580 again, and uh, looks very weird and kind of it's, it's not a great quality image, it's quite small or it's, it's human size, but actually, it's, it's, it's not very close, so it looks small. Uh, so that's why there's not a lot of detail here. But basically, we've got eye sockets and a long nose and a mouth there, so I'll put that in at the end as well. There's that one. There's some one or two missing here. I'm missing one that I just found. There was this rock that looked like it had some kind of um, uh, fossil in it here with some kind of finger-like structures, and I don't know what that is. It's some kind of weird fossil in the rock that's kind of split open here, revealing some kind of, perhaps some kind of dead creature or something. Don't know. Don't know what that is. I'll put that in anyway. You can have a look at that. But the main, the main one that, I was, that really interested me last night when I was going doing this this morning and last night was this one um, here. And this is what looks like some kind of yeti or large ape humanoid type creature. Now, you can actually see in the raw image here, you can see an eye socket here. If you let your eyes adjust, you can see teeth here and a mouth and, and, a, and part of the lower jaw and the head. The back of the head seems to have been kind of broken off here, kind of split away. This could be fossilized. This could be millions of years old. But like I said, it may be like a, a, a concretion uh, preservation like we have at Pompeii. So some, some of it could have broken off. So that would basically turn you to concrete, but there, there may well be a skull inside this, okay? Like you have at Pompeii. So who knows, it could be either, but to me, if you look carefully now unfortunately there there is a, something behind it which is obscuring the edge here try and ignore this here because there's a there's a rock just behind it which is kind of confusing the nose detail here but i, I would expect there to be a nose a nasal cavity here which would be rather small from this angle from this angle you wouldn't really see it because we're, we're side on okay so i'll put a clip of that in as well i'm, I'm calling that the yeti for now for one of a, a better title uh because it's that kind of pointed head shape and this is really large i'll show you where it is um on the image here okay this is the raw clip from 580 so 580 and it just looks like some random rocks uh, but until you look a bit more closely of course and it's near all the other statues and the skulls that, that i've just shown you there it is now if you let your eyes adjust you can see those teeth there and uh, 
skull, pointed skull coming up here. There's some other broken kind of rocks around it which don't help when you're viewing these things because it's much easier to work out what you're looking at when you look at something that's a standalone object. Uh, but when you have groups of rocks together, this is a kind of a standalone object here, this one. Okay? So it's easier to spot, but when you have groups of, of kind of rocks and skulls and, and statues together, it gets a bit confusing and it's difficult to make them out because they kind of muddle you up a bit visually. And also because of the, the art of focus images, it's, it's in this image as well here. There it is, just there. And there's another possible skull here. I don't know if that's one. There's loads of these on, on this mound. This is a huge mound here. Um, with loads and loads of artefacts on it and uh, I'll, I'll probably find a few more in over, over the next few days as I go through these images. I've made some gigapans of this and I'm slowly searching through it, this quite large area. So these are all related because basically these are near, this, this mound is, is, was the next major geological feature that the, the rover came to after it drove through this other area that I just showed you which was uh, this area, where this um, thing was, okay? So it drove through this area, then the next major features that it came to were the area I just showed you with what looks like a big yeti. And uh, before you even got to the yeti, it drove through this area where this is, right? Now this is all probably within 100 yards or 100 meters so you've got statues, you've got weird things with possible skulls with coral on them or, or statues with coral on. You've got this here. Uh, let me show you the enhanced clip of that because what I did, here's the raw clip of the, that statue there that Martin found years back there. What I did is I cut off the, uh, the offending thing behind to make it clearer because there was a rock just behind it obscuring the shape. So I, I just cut that off rather poorly I might add just there right but that that helps you see the object in its entire shape because we've removed that other object which was obscuring it so you've got a mouth there uh, a nose here eyes now is this mummified preserved in concrete or concreted or con concretion Pompeii style or is it actually a mummy I th think it could be a statue this one uh, judging by the way some of it's broken off here and, and it, yeah hard to say but judging by the size it's the same size as those others I showed you which is about a foot so it's the same scale and would maybe part of the set <laughs> a whole row of statues going from for probably a hundred meters if not further so there we are and um, that's about it really I'll put some clips of these things in at the end so we've got basically a whole bunch of, of what they're like skulls and both humanoid and uh, primate skulls, great apes like this. And then we've got a thing that looks like a yeti. There's this kind of monkey looking head here, but it's too vague, unfortunately. There's loads more of these in the area, but a lot of them are like this. They're in groups and you can't really make them out. Um, it's always better to go to, for standalone objects like this because they're clearer. You can just see them better. Right? So, credit to Martine for that find. I'll put her clip in, in in a minute. That's about it, really. So, if, like I said, if you want to download any of these things, they will all be... I'll put clips of these things all on, on the Artelian TV Mars magazine and you can come to these meme posts here and just download them if you like. And I, I do actively encourage that. There's another one here. I mean, a lot of these were spotted by Steve Bolden, but we have lots of people coming along now doing this research and finding interesting skulls and, and building blocks and broken bits of machinery and, and stuff lying around on the ground. There's all sorts of stuff. There's that, that meme clip I put up last night. And uh, there's all sorts of crazy stuff here. And on the moon as well, Vladimir's found something like an aeroplane flying above the moon, some kind of weird flying thing really crazy okay absolutely insane there's another 
thing that Steve Bolden found, which I posted. So I'll put lots of these clips in. So thanks for watching, everybody. Sorry that was quite long, but there's a lot to see in this area. So some of these may be like the Pompeii victims, which are concreted in volcanic, volcanic ash that's then hardened. Some of them may be actual mummies, like this in the Atacama Desert in Peru. In Chile, sorry, not Peru. And uh, who knows, uh, uh, some of these just may be eroded corpses, which are much more recent, and just dried out. And the wind's kind of blown some of the flesh and skin away and, and, and exposed them. They can often make very funny shapes where, when the uh, wind's eroded them, like Ventifax. So a whole mixed bag of stuff here Included in that, of course, are just oddly shaped rocks. And the fun part of this research is to try and determine which ones are just funny shaped rocks and which ones aren't. That's the whole purpose of this channel and the whole purpose, pretty much, of Mars magazine. But this does cover lots of other things as well. We don't just do Mars. So do come along. It's completely free. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please share on social media if you can and give the thumbs up. And... I will see you soon.